Hi, I'm Martin Bell. Welcome to the channel. This is the second video of the Shiny for Python series. In this video, I'll add a lot more features. The app is a lot more complex. It has two pages now, and I think it's a lot more interesting overall. Let's take a look at the application. So this is the new version of the application that I'm going to cover today. We basically have these two plots that show the risk and return of some stocks, the cumulative return. So let's say you've, you invested in these stocks in uh, start of 2006 and you hold them until the end of 2009. So this is the return you got. Um, and then we have the performance of each of the individual stocks and at the end, the equal weight portfolio. So in this second screen called single stock analysis, we have a selector of one stock and we can select benchmarks here. The idea is we can compare one stock against an index that has multiple stocks. So just to give you some context, Spy has 500 stocks, QQQ has 100. So these are mostly technology stocks. So it would make sense to compare Microsoft with QQQ. And TLT is a bond ETF, so it has it's another asset class. So it's, it's use, useful also to compare. And here we have the cumulative returns of these uh, stocks. So uh, yeah, TLT actually increases in, in the worst period of the 2008 crisis. Um, but yeah, all the stocks go down. So I can remove TLT. And we can see here that, yeah, they did about the same, which is pretty good for stock. So here we can see the monthly return distribution of each stock. So Apple did better than the indexes. Here we have the cumulative return, so it did very well. But yeah, this is mainly the application that I've built. Uh, we have these two screens. This one is to yeah, understand a portfolio and understand how each stock performed. And this one is to compare one stock against the benchmark. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. Here I have a few imports. So I'm importing some libraries and a function that's in helpers.py. So this is what we have. We have a set of imports and this performance function that we had in the previous application. So nothing changed here. This is the same thing. I just moved it to a script. So then we are reading some prices data. So we have this in a local file. Then we have the front end code that changed a little bit now. So I'm using a navbar page. So we have two pages in this application. If we scroll down, we have the server code. If we can think of it as the backend. So the idea now is to walk through the server code. That's probably the most complex part of the application. And I'll be linking back to the UI to show you how the two things are linked between each other. At the start of the function, we have a bunch of reactive calculations. So I'll scroll down and show you how many there are. So yeah, around four or five. In this case, what I did is uh, break down the calculations into multiple steps. So the first one, we're basically filtering the price data using this date range. So how do we know um, the dates, right? So we're receiving them from the UI. And this is defined in input dot date range. And if I do control F date range, I can go up and find where it's defined in the UI. In input date range, we define this ID, and that's how we are going to call this variable internally. So I'm going to go back to where we were. Uh, so, okay, here we get the start and end dates. Here I filter the the file that we just read, right? This data frame. Um, the next step is to uh, compute the daily returns. So what I'm doing here is the percent change of the prices at each day. Uh, so I have a list of stocks here that I'm getting from this selector. And you can see it's input.stocks. Here I'm filtering the stocks. So basically, this is what's computing the daily returns. Um, and, and you can see that we are calling this filter prices function, and that's defined above. So we are already calling this reactive calculation. I mean, we could have put these two together, but I found that it's sometimes easier to break them down in steps. And yeah, it depends on how complex the application will be moving forward. So now 
that we have daily returns, I want to convert them to monthly returns. So this is what I do in this calculation. So for example, if I wanted to add a button here that um, yeah, changes the output to be based on daily returns or monthly returns, that would be very easy to incorporate in this logic. Okay, so the next step is this performance long function. So here I'm getting the monthly returns. So I define this here in this reactive calculation. Here I'm, I'm using the performance function. That's what, what computes this table here. And this still is a reactive calculation. So it's stored in memory. The last one is returns benchmark. So here what I'm doing is receiving the start and end date. I'm filtering the prices data frame. And now I'm defining another list of talks. So this is uh, coming from somewhere else. So I'm going to do control F talk 1D. And we can see that this is defined in the single stock analysis tab. And the user sees this as select stock. So this is basically what we're defining. So this is where I'll pass an individual stock and we will be comparing to this benchmark. And that's it. That's, that's all the backend that's uh, kind of running internally and it depends on the inputs. Uh, and then we have everything that we are outputting to the user as a plot or a table. So I'll just walk through these values relatively quickly. So these are, these have two decorators. So output to show that we are outputting it and render widget. That is a way that you can uh, yeah, render an IPython widget. So these are mainly plotly uh, graphs that I am uh, showing. Also, this table is done by Plotly. And yeah, the, the code is relatively similar for all. But basically, here you define the role of this function in the application. And this is the name. So that's what we need to pass in the UI. So let me show you how this is passed in the UI. So this is the performance report. So basically, this table. And I'll do Control F. And here we have it. So we have output widget and its name performance report. And here we have the other output widget. So scatter plot, cumulative returns. And we can see that these are function names. So scatter plot and cumulative return. So basically this part is the call of a reactive calculation. So here I'm calling performance long. So I'm getting this uh, data frame. And everything that happens here is something you can do in a notebook. You can test it in a notebook. You can create an example and then come back and put it here. And the only shiny related uh, thing we need to do is this. So in a notebook, we will just print the figure. But here we need to add this um, figure widget. So the same is valid for the other function. So here I have plot and this is the reactive calculation, but everything that happens here is uh, just normal Python code. And let's take a look at the other ones. So, um, yeah, so here I added uh, some comments to show that this is related to this, this page, um, the single stock analysis, and we have the box plot and we have the cumulative returns. So we have the box plot here and then the other, the line chart. And at the end, we have this call that combines everything. So have the UI server, and this is an optional parameter. So now that we already took a look at the back end, I'll go back and explain a little bit the front end. So here I'm at the start of the script. So we have this app UI definition. In this case, I start using the page navbar. So this is what allows me to create a two page application. Um, so each each page is defined with ui.nav. So I give it a name here, performance, and the other one is called single stock analysis. I think if you read this and try to look for the similarities to the to the application, you can kind of figure out what's going on. So this part here is the date range. So it's called internally date range. So that's the ID. And to the user, we show it as date range. 
And the same happens with select stocks that's defined here. And, and you might wonder what is this UI row and UI column. So that's a framework that's used to arrange elements in the front end. So the idea is that we have rows and each row can have multiple columns and we have a grid of 12 elements. So here um, it, it's, it makes more sense with this example. So this is the, the code for the scatter plot and the, the line chart here. And you see that we put lib six, six values for the first plot and uh, yeah, six for the other one. So for example, I could put, let's say eight and four here. So they need to add to 12 and that will basically expand the scatter plot and squish this one a little bit. So that's basically the idea. So this is an eight elements of the grid and this is four. And that's very useful because you don't have to worry about the size or whatever. You just define the, the number of elements in the grid. And here you can see this, that we have 12. So that's why it's spread uh, at the bottom. So it uses all the width of the string. Okay, so this is the front end of the first page. And in the second one, Okay, it, it's relatively similar. So we have the stock 1D, that's the ID of this selector, and the benchmarks, that's uh, the ID of this uh, selector. Um, so it's really cool in this, uh, yeah, in these inputs that you can, um, yeah, you can, let's say, type a letter and it will filter the results in the front end. So that's very handy. Um, and then here we have the same thing. So we have, uh, one element using six uh, elements of the grid and the other one the same. And I found that basically this idea of rows and columns, it's very useful. And then we have this kind of metadata of the application. So the app title, background color, and yeah, a few other uh, boilerplate code. And, and that's basically it. I mean, we have some code that's global. So we read some data, for example, and the nice thing of Shiny is that you read it only once. And then we have defined the, so then we define the front end. So UI page navbar, and then we have the server function. Okay. So how can we run this in VS code? So in order to run it, you just run this uh, command, Shiny run reload and pass the script name and yeah, it, it starts a server locally and that's it. Uh, it starts running. All I had to do is refresh it. And there is an extension that helps you do this a little bit more automatically, but it didn't work really well for me. The nice thing of how this, this server works is that if you change something in the code, um, let's say I, I remove a parenthesis here. I'm just going to save it. Uh, okay. It generated an error, obviously. And it tells you, right? Yeah, it's failing here, line 116. So it got here and it just didn't work. So I add it back, save the script and it starts running again. So you can literally code the application by just changing the script. I've actually done that for a few cases where I found the, yeah, the, the changes I need to make were very simple. I didn't even need to move an example to a Shoepyter notebook and debug it there. So yeah, I think that's really great. It helps a lot to uh, speed up the process. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, please subscribe and like it.